Well, I'll start at the beginning. If, if I've got a lot of reading, which depends, I think the reading can pile up. So if I've got lots of reading, I'll wake up really early and read because I can't read in the evening, I just fall asleep. So if I've got reading, I wake up early, make myself a cup of tea and go back to bed and do my reading. And then I get up, uh, my alarm goes at quarter to seven and I get my son up and we kind of have breakfast on the go and I get him off to the station for school and then um, I walk the dogs and come home. I'd like to say that at this point I do my Pilates, um, but I don't usually. Very, very occasionally that happens. And, and then I get to work and I sit at my desk and, and I try and get my kind of correspondence emailing out of the way. And then I um, have to do a little bit of keeping up with Twitter and all of that. And then I get down to writing. And my routine is not, I don't have to do a certain length of time, but I have to do a word count. So when I'm work, write, working on a first draft of something, I have to write a thousand words a day. I, I can never tell at the beginning of the day whether it's going to be a good day or not. Um, and I take lots of little breaks. So I go and make myself cups of tea. I drink gallons and gallons of tea. And uh, I usually don't stop for lunch, but I have these like, little breaks. So I'll stop, make myself a cup of tea, put the laundry on and then come back. And somehow that helps my thought process because sometimes things need unpacking in, in my unconscious mind or something. I don't really know how it works. So then I keep on going really until the dogs start to complain that they need to go out again. And my son comes home and I'll usually try and get a bit more work in before, before I finish. It depends how well it's been going or I'll do some more social networking. <laughs> and, then, and then that's it for the day. But the dog walk is, is the good kind of uh, structure to my day because I have to get up for them and, and I have to take them out, which, is, which means I'm not just sitting on my bum all day, which is good. Well, I've got all these objects that I like to surround myself with while I'm writing, so you can see all the postcards. And a lot of them are people in my books or they're people that I've used as the inspiration for people in my books. And um, I like pictures of interiors and and then I have my family looking over me. <laughs> and um, I've got this. I'm very fascinated by uh, miniatures. And I bought myself this one when I first got my Queen's Gambit book deal. It was my gift to myself. And it's a 19th century copy of a Nicholas Hilliard miniature. I, I cannot yet afford a Nicholas Hilliard miniature if lots of people buy my books, maybe one day. <laughs> um, it's of Mary, Queen of Scots, who, who features in uh, two of the three books, actually. I love a bit of Tudor kitsch. My Henry VIII Russian dolls, um, given to me by my lovely editor, um, Henry, Catherine of Aragon, <laughs> cast aside. That would be... Anne Boleyn, beheaded. Oh, where is she? Jane Seymour, died in childbirth. Oh, where are you, Anne of Cleves? Anne of Cleves. He just simply didn't like her. Uh, then we've got Catherine Howard, beheaded, age 17, poor love. And then teeny tiny Catherine Parr, of Queen's Gambit fame. <laughs> so yes, a bit of Tudor silliness. <laughs>